Hello, welcome to our group presentation. We are here to present about food preservation. We have five members in the group, but actually four of us is here today. One of us, Ilham, ex uh, unfortunately cannot come here today, so he sent us a footage of his presentation from home. Let's get to know each member. I am Fatullah Ramadan and I am Fadli Aude Putra. I am Alpen Chantan Sofasa. Okay, so that is for the introduction. We will be moving on to the part where we will discuss about the food preservation. Ilham here will present about the outline of this audio. Hello, I am Rafael Preman, and here I will tell you about my opinion of this topic. The first thing that I catch of this topic is why the food goes bad. The first problem is microbes like bacteria and fungi. So. These microbes invite the food and eat all the nutrients in the food. And some of these microbes bring disease. So when you eat the food that's already invited by microbes, it's not just lotion less, but it might give you disease because of this microbe. And the second one is oxidation. When you leave the foods in open air, the chemical in the food itself react with surrounding air. So, for example, an apple, when you cut it open, it turns brown because the apple is react with surrounding air. So people try to invent a way to make this kind of thing doesn't happen. For the first one is for the microbes, people try to make the food is uninhabitable. For them, for example, they try to use salt and sugar so that the water containing the food is reduce so that the microbes doesn't have any water to grow and the second one is oxidation people using smoke because smoke in the wood has antioxidant chemical that make the food is doesn't react with oxygen anymore so i think it's really safe to use this preservation because there's a lot of research that they already do and it's already been everywhere right now. I mean, we can use it, but we need to question about how much we use this food preservation because for sure it does have positive effect, but like other things, it also has negative effect. Just keep that in mind. So that was it for Ilham's presentation. I think Ilham did a good job on delivering the summary of food preservation. And here we would like to express our opinion about food preservation also, such as Fadri here would like to talk about good bacteria, and Albert Hill would like to talk about preservative compounds and Lucida Flores. Lucid brings disease, any disease, and here. I would like to talk about food preservation with a natural method or synthetically method. So, Fadi here, what do you think? Yeah, so I think one of the interesting things from this topic is the existence of good bacteria, good microorganisms. So, of course, as a kid, I used to think that Basically, all microorganisms are kind of like hostile towards us, towards food. And even as Ilham mentioned, one of the reason that many food goes bad is because there are bacteria or microbes that invade them. But it is quite fascinating to me that there is actually existence of bacteria that does the exact opposite of that. So instead of making food go stale, it actually prolongs their shelf life. Like from what I've read, there are some bacteria that basically have some acid called lactic acid or something. And in some like fermented food or cultured foods, they are used so that the nutrients are, are multiplied and their shelf life are also pro prolonged. 
and also <coughs> this kind of food they promote our gut health because these good bacteria they improve our gut health because they contain these probiotics that help balance the good bacteria in our gut so it can even prevent things like constipation so yeah i think that's one of the most interesting things to me in this topic okay buddy. so i heard that those kinds of food that has good bacteria are called cultured food am i right yeah some of them like fermented food and cultured foods Hmm. I also heard that yogurt is also one of the example. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the audio mentioned that yeah, yogurt is one of the example and aside from that there are others like tempeh. Yeah, I'm sure tempeh is one of them and even what is it? I forgot the name. Kimchi? Ah yeah, kimchi yeah. from Korea. Yeah. Kimchi even is one of the example of culture foods. Maybe we shall not or However, I pronounce it is from Europe. It's also uh, cultural food. Mm. Yeah, my right. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Padli. So let's get moving on to Albert. Okay. I can report some virtue in Padli Point as according to FDA, many many preservatives in products are deemed to be safe as the usage of them is usually very low. Some might some might not use it. You can just use you, you can just use. Packaging method and it it will avoid any oxygen to, to food that will be in the package. And however, however, it is important to note that a chemical a chemical existence in the food is very important and very a big part in a food preservation and it removes a major problem in a food preservation such as oxidite and microbiome. Even though it was good, used in a good with a good intention, there are some risks at the cost of using them. With one of the example is the usage of oh, what's called the meat. Yeah, cured meat. Yeah, cured meat like sausage. Mm. Sausages mm. contain a micro anti-microbial mm. nitrate and the nitrate and nitrate. Uh, it can prevent off. Any disease in the in improper in a, in, in an improper person could, but it could cause cancer too. And there are an, another anti-microbial microbials and methods like putting sugar in a jam and salt in a meat. Doing so, it will it will absorb water and suck the moisture in it and thus destroying the microbials on it and and good, good and soft the food can be preserved. But the overuse of them can can cause a heart disease, so don't overdose on them. Okay? And the third one, which is the best of both world in the soft whole fights can can be both as antioxidant and antimicrobials. However, it is noted that the combat like sulfide, combat and sulfide can have a risk for a people with a, um, allergic reaction to it, so be careful with eating a food that you don't know. Okay. Mm, okay, we will be <laughs> careful. But guys, I want to ask something here. What do you guys eat for sahur? You know, do you guys eat any cured meat like you know nuggets, <laughs> nuggets or maybe sausage? <laughs> Mm. Mm. Uh, I mean, honestly, for me nowadays, I don't think I eat much for a sour. Like, I mean, the other day, I basically just drink water and eat some kurma, some dates. I mean, and that's it. I usually don't eat much foods. But yeah, what about you? Uh, I would eat uh, maybe rice and just uh, Tempe? Mm. Oh, exactly. Yeah. 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 Good bacteria, I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's curry and fried chicken. Mm. Fried chicken. Okay. So, uh, as we know, cured meat is easy to cook, 
and all but yeah if you like to eat one for sour because the time is very narrow you know yeah. don't uh, don't eat it every day don't overdo it as Albert yeah. said because it will bring cancer am I right? cancer yeah, yeah. 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 Um, mostly it's a heart disease yeah, yeah hardly as long as it's in moderation it's fine so it should be fine okay speaking of cured meat I think I'm here would like to talk about food preservation in a natural or synthetic way. I don't know. I would like to talk about preserving food naturally or synthetically. As we know, naturally preserving food generally uses salt, sugar, and smoke. On the other hand, its synthetic counterpart uses acidic compound. Preserving foods, as the name suggests, is done to make them last longer. Indonesia is a tropical country, uh, meaning rich happens of them. This, this leads to food spoilage. Due to this condition, Indonesia has local preserved food such as dendeng, which is smoked and utilized as salt. Yeah. Yes, I'm from. <laughs> yeah, I think it is interesting that basically the people in the past adapt to our humid environment and made these various apartment fermented foods like <laughs> of some kind. Yeah. yeah. Hmm, I think that's quite interesting. So smoke and salt such as tandem. Yeah, I haven't eaten that in a while. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking of you mentioned the salt the salt you can smoke as Yeah. yeah, I am actually surprised that Indonesia have a food like that, you know, yeah. because we are a tropical country, not a four season country, and we have a preserved food such as dating. That is, mm. yeah. So maybe that is all from us, yeah. and maybe the conclusion is, yeah, um, the foods foods do expire they uh, they will spoil over time and if we do not store them in a proper way uh, in a natural or synthetic way and if we do not know much about them they will yeah will be inedible over time this was uh, some example of how to keep them uh, stay longer and if it brings any disease or risk to your health And maybe I would like to mention a fun fact such as uh, unfiltered, uh, unfiltered, untreated water. I'm sorry. We have Toyagama on the college, at uh, the campus, right? Yeah. Yeah. Toyagama. We cannot drink just a regular PDAM water here, but in America we could just drink straight from the tap water, you know, oh, yeah. and it's, it's fine. But in Indonesia here we cannot drink that directly. While on the other hand, Toyagama seems to do a good job on this they did filter the microbi- microbials on the dirty water uh, what is the method for the toyagama did for uh, sterilizing uh, sterilizing the water yeah i think it's sterilizing mm. to remove the microbials i think that's very impressive thing to do yeah and guys what do you think if uh, we were eating a toast a bread oh. yeah You know that if a uh, bread has a mold or a fungi in the in the tip of it, you know, yeah. do you guys just uh, pelt it off and throw it away and still eat, or yeah, you throw away all of the? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. I, think, Talk about I think you should just throw it away because from what I remember, like when you see mold, it's not just that part that has mm-hmm. mold. The mold has basically spread inside mm-hmm. them. So it basically has spread everywhere. We basically just didn't see it. So yeah, it's better to just throw away your spoiled bread. Not worth it's not good. Yeah, it's not worth it to eat that. Just throw it that away. <laughs> no time. Okay. I think that is the definition of counter because the a counter food because the fungi and the bacteria has uh, has built and roots. Yeah, mm-hmm. the roots inside the bread, and you just so just throw it away. Yeah. Even though it's delicious or something <laughs> and maybe another myth around the around the population 
such as what if you drop a foot uh, to the ground to the floor it's not five minutes yet do you guys want to still eat it is it contaminated yet how does the bacteria spread is that very quick yeah any answer to that maybe <laughs> I think it's so like sometimes I still get to drop to the floor as long as I think that it's not too dangerous. It's, pop, it's probably not the best thing to do, but uh, whatever, I guess. Yes, so all of us mm, teenagers have those uh, dilemma about food wasting. <laughs> we would mm -hmm. like to, we would not like to waste any food, but if some bad things happen such as yeah food spoilage and uncared um, storing that leads to foul odor foul taste to the food yeah we should just dispose it away for our health yep that is all for our presentation we thank you for watching and apologize if any misconduct or any <laughs> Uh, any comments? Misinformation. Misinformation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we're all yeah. very amateur. Oh, yeah. 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 all just amateur in this particular topic. Yeah, so forgive us. See you when I see you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.